This video is brought to you by Linsol Audio. Today is a very exciting day because Linsol, a very well-known storefront for all things audio, you might have heard them, collaborated with me to tackle one of the most requested topic in the channel, which is converting IEMs to true wireless earbuds. So we're going straight to the point and check out a couple of different setups that all cost less than 80 bucks and compare them to some much more expensive wireless earbuds and see how they stack up. Hit the thumbs up if you're excited and let's get started. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to my first attempt at converting IEMs to truly wireless earbuds. As always, my full disclosure is down below, but what you're getting is always going to be my own honest opinion. Still though, thanks to Linsol for making this video possible in the first place. You can find links to their store down below to buy all the stuff mentioned in this video. They've got great service, plenty of choices, and shipment across the globe as well, so rest assured buying from them. Okay, let's start talking about the setup now. Of course, the possibilities are endless, but in this video, I wanted to narrow down the focus on budget IEMs that you might already have. Here we have the CCA CRA, the KZ ZS10 Pro X, as well as the new Kiwi Ears Dolce, all under $40 IEMs. Now, as for the wireless adapter, nowadays we've got quite a lot of options, but you have to look for QCC 3040 chip or above to get dual mode Bluetooth where you can switch left and right sides seamlessly. And to fit the $80 budget of this video, the best we can do is either AZ9 Pro, AZ10, or this AZ15 we've got here, which ranges around 40 to 50 bucks. The only limitation to these KZs is you can only get one connector type. So I've got the C pin here or QDC in another name, which is basically two pin connector with some plastics covering it. But you can also get B pin, which is the normal normal exposed two pin connector and it will work on QDC IEMs anyway. Just sadly, there's no MMCX option at all here. Quickly talking about my true wireless experience with the AZ15, everything is solid so far. Things you normally expect like easy pairing, seamless switching between left and right earbuds, no latency issues when watching videos. There's gaming mode in the name of high performance mode. If you triple click on the right side button and triple clicking on the left side button is full power mode, which increases the bass. But as we'll go more in depth later, you'll see why I don't really recommend using it unless the IEM comes out very, very quiet. Otherwise, this button control is fine. Just there's no volume control here. As far as codec is concerned, Aptex is supported here. Just sadly, there's no Aptex adaptive, which is the advantage of this QCC 3046 here over the 3040 because the low latency mode automatically kicks in when you play games. But I still appreciate the presence of Aptex because unlike normal true wireless earbuds, we're trying to maximize sound quality here, right? And we'll take everything, even eking out that extra five to 10% of sound quality. Speaking of other things, this is a chunky case, right? But it's to be expected when you want to house a full size IEM with solid battery to power it. And battery life for each earbud here is around eight hours, which is more than enough for any use case. And it's got nine more charges inside this case, which makes battery a non-issue. You'll charge the whole thing in a couple weeks or up to a month, depending on your usage. Now, build quality wise, the matte plastic is not super premium or anything, but it gets the job done. There's foam padding inside to protect your IEM. The LEDs indicate pairing mode and charging. Just the flash when music is not playing, but otherwise stays off. And my only nitpick here is the lid that doesn't stay open. And it takes a while to get used to taking the right earbuds from the left side and vice versa. But I understand if they make it otherwise, it will make the case even bigger. Okay, there's actually one bigger problem here, but I don't know if this is the case with other adapters as well. Simply said, the ear hook is too flexible and soft. So it barely does anything to stay around your ear. And when you shake your head even just a little bit, the battery part could throw itself out, pulling the IEM out with it. Or there was one time I was like on a side plank position and very quickly the battery just pulls out the IEM just with gravity. So let me know what's your experience with the other adapters because my experience with other ear hook true wireless earbuds are usually not like this. They make this fit stable. Okay, now we've gone quickly over the adapter here. I'm going to focus more on the sound quality and test the microphone later at the end. So hit the thumbs up if this video has been helpful so far. And let's start with the most affordable IEM and actually very well reviewed too. This is the 15 bucks CCA 
CRA. So I'm going to compare Love Story by Taylor Swift here. And with the adapter standard mode, we've got a balanced tuning with detailed bass tuned just enough to support the music, but the focus is definitely on the upper mids to treble, giving wider soundstage and instrument details. I'm impressed by how close it gets to wired here, where especially you can make out how the tambourine moves even in the most crowded part of the song. But then let's try triple clicking on the left side and go to full power mode. Immediately, you'll feel like the sound staging closes up to the center of your head, then the bass punch as well as upper mids are noticeably boosted. So now there's a constant bass guitar highlighted and a treble also gets very bright, especially in the chorus as you start to hear the open high hat and the tambourine brought forward. Problem is instrument separation takes a hit and honestly I would recommend the standard mode instead as it provides a better tuning more true to how it performs in wired mode instead of getting this very overly bright upper mid to treble. But okay how does it sound wired? Well, firstly, volume is one click louder than full power mode or two clicks louder than standard mode. You'll see this pattern as we move on to other IMs as well. But for the sound itself, firstly, the bass is stronger than standard mode, but still not as boosted as full power mode. Also, at the same time, the CRA felt more dynamic and sharp. What I mean is every drum hit sounds clear but impactful. Treble never felt harsh, especially compared to the full power mode and sound staging is the widest out of all options, which is to be expected. But the more important difference is the instrument separation that's noticeably better when things get crowded. I would say we're getting 85%-ish of the wired performance here with the wireless adapter, which is plenty fine. My wired testing is also not with a fancy DAC, just with this Apple dongle. And I do this so you would get a good feel of how, you know, you would start out converting IEMs. You would go from this, to this. And considering the $60 price, we're getting so much more sound quality compared to other true wireless earbuds at this price. But let's just go straight to the mainstream flagship wireless earbuds here, the 250 bucks Apple AirPods Pro 2 to give you an idea of how this much cheaper setup would perform. And hey, I think the CRA might sound better. But as an important note, my better here at this point is a matter of preference because the AirPods Pro 2 is already a huge improvement from the first gen and it sounds great for a wireless setup with A and C and everything. Just tuning has always been rather neutral where it focuses on the mids which might leave some people wanting for more bass or detailed sound. And that's exactly where the CRA takes the win. Comparing Don't Look Back in Anger by Oasis, the AirPods Pro 2 even after tuning for a balanced tone cannot match the clarity of the CRA. And by that, I mean how the vocals and lead guitars are highlighted without the rhythm guitar playing at the same loudness. And as far as sound staging is concerned, the vocals are slightly back compared to the AirPods, but they're slightly wider as well as the volume is one click louder on the CRA. I still don't recommend the full power mode here as it makes the S and T sibilant, but standard mode, mwah, amazing. And let's just for fun, right? Compare this setup to the Moondrop Alice, a permanent endgame version of converting IM to wireless because it's got the Kato Dynamic Driver and top of the line QCC 5151 chip for 190 bucks. It's quite literally one of the best sound you can get out in the true wireless market right now. And how does it compare? To my surprise, in this pop song love story comparison, the amount of detail the CRA put out is as close as it gets. The only noticeable difference here is the Moondrop has fuller female vocals and a better tuning overall that makes the sound more balanced. But where you'll notice a bigger difference is in more complicated songs like this J-Rock genre by Yoroshika. The Alice pulls ahead when it comes to bringing all instrument equally to the soundstage while still giving you a full bodied vocal. The CRA sounds cheaper in comparison with its V-shaped tuning, but again, it's all preference, right? Honestly, I am extremely impressed with the CRA, which proves itself to be a killer IM for a mere 15 bucks. Again, links are down below if you want to get this set up right now. And if you like the way I do these reviews, please subscribe to see more audio and tech contents coming in the future. But let's move on to the second IEM choice now, which is a new brand in the channel. This is a 25 bucks Q ears Dolce. So this is another single dynamic driver IEM with similar detail retrieval to the CRA, but it's got a different tuning that embodies fun itself, which is, well, bass. And for you who doesn't like bright sounding IEM, this is a great alternative 
with not overly done bass, but it's a significant boost that makes EDM and pop just that much more fun. Compared to the CRA, the mid is also fuller, the treble is less aggressive, but at the same time, it's not as rolled off as the, you know, one of the most well recommended for bass, the Blonde BL-03 here, which is why this is becoming one of my favorite bass IEM under 30 bucks. But let's start comparing how it sounds first with a pop song. No Excuses by Megan Trainer, and we'll compare it to, again, the AirPods Pro 2. So the main difference here is when the beat comes in, the AirPods makes every thump felt confined in the center, whereas the Dolce effortlessly spreads it wide. This creates a more impactful bass without muddying the details and the positioning like guitar playing at the center back, vocals in front, drums to the side. And speaking of volume, the Dolce is about two clicks quieter than the KZ and CCA in wireless mode, but you will still be listening around 60 to 70% volume on a daily basis. And it's worth noting that it's about the same volume as this AirPods Pro 2. So most of you will not have a problem with it. And moving on to the best genre for this IEM, we're going to take Wish You Well by Sigala. And as expected, this is very satisfying. The low end goes deep into the sub bass. It's strong and without question the highlight of the tuning, but it doesn't hinder the vocals and instruments. The female vocal and backup vocals comes out clean and every note from the synth is distinct even in the busiest parts. And it's also worth noting that this is all in standard mode that I recommend as the full power mode. Yeah, it increases that bass, but also makes the treble harsh. Like you literally grin listening to every hi-hat hit. So don't use it, just raise the volume by one click in standard mode and you'll get that bass without the harshness. Now, comparing this to wired is actually quite simple. It's now about two clicks louder again. And in general, the detail retrieval is better. We have more power across the board, which means more powerful bass rumble and more aggressive upper mid to treble, which is actually quite surprising because it is quite warm with this adapter. I like both sounds here, but I think I prefer the wireless one. And if you love bass, you should definitely try this set up out. It's actually pretty good. All right, as our most expensive IEM today, here we have the KZ ZS10 Pro X at almost 40 bucks, which maxes out the budget now. And to be honest, I am a bit lost when it comes to picking out my first KZ here, since there are a gazillion other models to choose from. So let me know if you have any recommendations down in the comments below. But anyway, I am being very careful here because there was an issue with how KZ uses their many driver counts. But after a good long research, I think it's safe to say that they do use the B to color the sound even though very slightly and I've experienced it firsthand on this specific model. So at first, I tried to compare the ZS10 Pro X with the CRA on this wireless adapter, right? And I was so lost that I reached out to you all. Where should I listen to for a difference? But then after I used everything a bit longer, I got a better feel of how each sounds here and I noticed that I needed to go wired in order to notice the difference. So what we see here is a unique way of using BA because usually I would see separate sound channels for each dynamic and BA unit. But here the BA just fires to the main dynamic driver chamber and everything goes straight to your ear canal. It's probably why the difference is so subtle and you need to use it wired to notice the most difference because, well, you see the size, right? The BAs are so small and the dynamic drivers are so big, but okay. Tell me exactly where the difference is, right? So I listened to Hold Back the River by James Bay and immediately the ZS10 Pro X felt wider in his sound staging. Vocals are a bit pulled back, but instrumentation are more spread out in a horizontal plane. You can better place the instruments like guitar on the left, drums on the far right, these kinds of stuff. And it's easier to distinguish the little instruments detail like every stroke made by the rhythm guitar, the drumstick clicking and the small cymbals, which is an improvement over the CRA, but then we make it wireless and suddenly the sound quality advantage diminishes significantly. Like the wider sound stage isn't as apparent now, instead it's presented more like a CRA now with boosted upper mid and bass, making vocals and bass guitar more prominent in the mix. Fortunately, I still hear some little details like the guitar strum and the stick click to be better than the CRA. Even the bass guitar comes out a bit more detailed even though positioning isn't as good anymore. I could see that this is a diminishing return at this point and neither full power mode nor high performance mode can bring it any closer to the wired performance. And that's pretty much everything I've got. I really hope this helps you out in knowing exactly what you're getting, especially if you want the most sound quality for the price. And yeah, let's do the mic test now and we'll conclude the video over there. 
Okay, so welcome to the microphone test, everyone. This is me with the KZAZ15 wireless adapter, and that's paired with the uh, ZS10 Pro X over there. So uh, what do you think of the sound quality? I actually um, did a phone call with this before, and well, I mean, it's not the best in the world, but it's usable for really short bursts of calls. Uh, but for longer conversation, I really don't think you would use this. So yeah, now let's go outside and we'll see how it performs. Okay, now that we are outside, wind is blowing in my face right now. And I that's the problem with the TV screen, so I'll face the other side. So what I wanted to say is the purpose for this conversion in the first place is to get the best sound quality possible. I'm probably going to check out more adapters in the future. Again, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Do support them by buying them through the purchasing below. But anyway, I'll leave my best item recommendation of under 80 bucks just to try to go the right way and get the maximum, maximum sound quality possible. And I'll let YouTube serve you the second video here. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenneth, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.